Hello and welcome back again, ladies and gentlemen, to the very interesting next session here of our partner country, France, on the am for You stage. And we are tackling now a topic that is really important because the companies that are presenting now are the drivers for everything that uh, is running around AM because we are talking about the topic of software, a key component to serve the promise of mass personalization, distributed manufacturing and IP protection. And I'm super happy to welcome three speakers speakers here on the stage. I start with Philippe Laslery, uh, business development from VSS Orca. I hope uh, you, you know how difficult it is. It's good to have you here. Thank then you. I have Christian Dacier, uh, VP Sales, Spare Part 3D. And last but not least, Clémé Glacé, Life Science Solution Consultant at Dassault System. Uh, Philippe, you're going to start. Your four minutes. Please enjoy. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm delighted to be there and I will uh, talk on behalf of uh, Vaxs Orca, of course, Orange Group company, and uh, uh, three other partners that I will uh, mention uh, in the in the presentation. So, um, we are four uh, um, French small companies: uh, Vaxs Orca, Maclix, who is uh, uh, also an um, MES uh, provider, um, uh, as well as a Service Bureau Epsilon and a Cos Cosmix, which is a uh, um, printer vendor, and we have decided to uh, gather our strength uh, to provide with a um, unique value proposition because we believe that technology is great, but at the end, uh, what we wanted is to deliver uh, a solution to a need. And what is the need that we wanted to, to tackle? In fact, the need is to, um, let's say, um, as an OEM, I have a catalog of uh, parts spare parts or whatever, and I want to be sure that this can be easily uh, manufactured all over the world on a network of uh, uh, manufacturing uh, facilities in a secure way so that I can uh, license my IP. So this has to be an end-to-end -end use case, of course, uh, with the specific use case of distributed manufacturing, which we we'll believe is really growing and will become uh, very strong in, in the near future. Uh, so if we s s look at the different steps, the first step is of course to publish a part and receive very quickly uh, a quotation. So we, then we use the uh, automatic quotation tool provided by uh, Marklix, our partner. And then the service bureau will make the quotation once the uh, purchasing uh, flows are accepted then the transaction is agreed uh, using uh, e-commerce uh, capabilities. And then um, uh, the, the idea is later on to uh, provide with uh, the good scheduling to optimize the um, manufacturing capabilities of the service bureau. In this case, uh, we have uh, our partner Epsilon. Of course, as an OEM, I want to make sure that my uh, most valuable asset, my IP, is well protected and I can have um, the revenue I'm expecting to have. We can make a parallel with what has been uh, done in the field of entertainment, music, VOD, where, of course, without this uh, security all over the uh, digital journey, you, you, there is no business. You, you, who, who would invest in, in uh, uh, all this if there is no uh, revenue behind this? Uh, and that, of course, we also need to have reliable, uh, cost-effective online uh, printers, such as uh, Cosmix, our partner. And at last, uh, of course, we need to rely on a network of partners in terms of production. So Epsilon has great experience and can uh, bring you all over from uh, design, advice on design, up to the guarantee the uh, quality of uh, production. So to present it in a, in a different way, uh, this is the workflow uh, coming from the uh, CAD where we will encrypt the content and using all these different uh, functionalities I have talked about, uh, quotation, uh, planning, up to the production. And of course, we did the print integration of all this. And we believe that this print integration, this use case, this a uh, customer-centric uh, use case uh, makes the value of, uh, of this solution. Thank you very much for your attention. 
What a timing, Philippe. Awesome. Thank you very much. Excellent presentation. Um, yeah, then uh, we could hand over, Christian. Uh, it's a pleasure to hear a presentation. Thank you. Hello, I'm uh, Christian from SparePart 3D. Uh, we developed a software called DigiPart, which helps companies accelerate and industrialize parts identification and inventory uh, creation. And I'm going to illustrate this with a uh, use case that we just finished with the national oil company of, uh, of Oman. The, um, yeah, thank you. Um, the uh, problem statement of Oman was they had a catalog of 150,000 spare parts that they wanted to move to uh, 3D printing. Uh, they have a very uh, aggressive roadmap for the country. And uh, they lacked the uh, knowledge, the know-how, and the information uh, completeness on the each of the spare parts to actually do the analysis. So uh, we came in and we helped them uh, do this and actually accelerate the, uh, the different uh, analytical uh, steps. How did we do that? By using DigiPart, which is uh, a software that operates in different steps. One of them is a semantic recognition algorithm that allows to uh, recognize parts, group them, cluster them, uh, look at what are the functional specification, the different environment in which they operate, from which we can derive functional specification. Uh, for the parts that cannot be recognized, we cluster them, we create new part categories, uh, talk with the engineers on workshops uh, to define the types of environment that those parts uh, operate into, uh, and then we cascade automatically all the functional specs to those parts so that we can therefore later on derive the right uh, material and processes from an AM standpoint that makes sense to print those parts. This uh, basic uh, operational of, uh, of our software allows to quickly treat the 150,000 spare parts that, uh, that we sift through, uh, derive the 62,000 spare parts that were really uh, important to focus on that had a technical solution, and then apply a business case formula that were relevant to the client to define the one that were most pertinent. So we went from 150,000 spare parts originally uh, to uh, 62,000 that were uh, technically uh, printable, and then we focused on the one that had the most business potential that varied between 3.5 and 11%, depending on the uh, use cases and business case that we were looking at. Uh, cherry on the cake, uh, we also produced a report for the country uh, that uh, looked at the main technologies from an AM standpoint that made sense for them to invest into, uh, what we call the in-country report. Uh, those countries are very keen on developing their local capabilities, so we were able to give them the directions in terms of technology that made sense. Uh, basically, uh, those are some of the obviously uh, very nice comments from, uh, from PDO. But in a nutshell, we made them gain two years uh, in their roadmap to accelerate and implement additive manufacturing to spare parts. Uh, we are at booth uh, 127 in Hall 12. Uh, gladly answer all the questions that you might have. Thank you very much. So I hope it's running, Clement. Thank you very much, uh, Christian. Uh, pleasure to hear your presentation. And let's see, once it's started, you can start, Clement. Stage is yours. OK, thank you. So quick, uh, quick introduction. So just uh, waiting uh, for a point to load. Um, but do you know, for example, uh, just giving you a number. Um, Takes a while. Again. Yes. So what are these numbers? Um, what do you think? Like 5, 25%, 15%? What, what, what are these numbers? So basically, today there are five software changes uh, in, a, in, in, a, in a basic uh, uh, additive manufacturing process from uh, design to uh, execution of the, of the process. Um, and 25% of the additive manufacturing process uh, is spent uh, in testing and validating uh, the, the parts you are producing. And uh, did you know that 15% of medical devices are 3D printed today? It's, can, it's, a, it's a big number. So the question is, as you know that today we are going more and more to uh, personalized uh, medicine, personalized implants, how do you reduce this time to market to go to mass production uh, through uh, 
for example, one unified environment for additive manufacturing. So today with Dassault System, uh, we support uh, um, most of the processes that you see uh, on the screen. So from powder bed to uh, binder jetting, uh, going to uh, material extrusion and even photopolymerization. And uh, we support uh, uh, most of the industries uh, that you can uh, uh, meet in, uh, in our today's world. Uh, the story I will tell you about today is about uh, life science, so medical implants. Uh, and uh, so made by a powder bed uh, application. So basically, this is uh, the full story uh, we are telling uh, to uh, our customers today about additive manufacturing. So what do we support? So basically, I, I, I could tell you all, but you won't believe me, so I will uh, just show you. Um, it's from a collaboration uh, with uh, the basic of the 3D experience platform. We allow a, a, a smooth path from uh, generative design to part preparation, uh, going to even post-processing and uh, negative compensation because you all know that uh, an additive manufacturing part uh, isn't really, uh, um, so you have tolerances to, to respect and if you don't play on the software, on the design of your part, your part will completely be distorted. So we have uh, all, uh, all of these uh, solutions and even going uh, to the execution part with planning and scheduling software uh, and uh, execution, execution systems. Um, just So the story you will see now is about what you see at the screen, so from generative design, uh, even going to the marketplace, uh, so no more teasing. Uh, this is uh, just a video. Uh, so the whole journey starts uh, so in a clinic where uh, you uh, are gathering uh, all the medical uh, uh, medical data uh, from your patient. Uh, you are going, making CT scans and uh, reconstruction of, um, of the CT scans. And um, based on this, uh, with the 3D experience platform, we are able to make the generative design of the part, optimize its topology, considering different scenarios, different use cases. And in a virtual twin of a manufacturing plant, we are able to, in its environment, so create and uh, the different uh, strategy, stra uh, so support strategy, laser strategies, and um, and even to create uh, uh, like different strategy for support for different parts, which makes uh, the the job of uh, additive manufacturing engineer really easier uh, because um, there is no one strategy. You all know about it. So uh, and and then uh, you can uh, do a. Uh, all your building plate, uh, you can uh, optimize your nesting parts uh, directly uh, on your building plate. And, um, and based on this, uh, you can then generate outputs. So outputs for planning and scheduling, outputs as well for manufacturing execution systems. And, uh, and then let's go, uh, let's go to produce. So basically, uh, what we say with the platform, so you have one, one environment for all, uh, from generative design, uh, to, uh, to execution of your, of your productions, and you can gain a lot of time, uh, a lot of time to market. So, yeah, if you are interested, I'm really happy to answer your questions as well on other topics which are not covered in this, in this video. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Clément. Yeah, thank you so much uh, to you speakers. Uh, great topics in the field of software. And what does software need? Of course, software needs data. And this is a topic we want to tackle in our next session. And we're going to do this in just three minutes after another highlight block. See you there.